A site has found the cause of fibromyalgia and successfully treated it over a decade ago, but you don't get to hear about it until now. Now let me share a story with you. Years ago, doctors had patients complaining of widespread pain, but they couldn't find anything wrong. Now it's very undoctor-like to say, I know nothing, so they put in the diagnosis manual that if anyone had widespread pain for a while and the test came back negative to say it was fibromyalgia. Now this was a real burn for doctors and drug companies. The doctors got to sound authoritative even if they couldn't find anything. Specialists and testing laboratories make a fortune out of diagnosing this condition and drug companies are happily selling symptom relieving drugs to patients who will never get better. Then, over a decade ago, several scientists worked out what causes fibromyalgia and even successfully treated it. Now, it takes a while for knowledge like that to get through to doctors. It took 14 years from when penicillin was developed to when doctors started using it. But in this case, people aren't dying and the doctors and drug companies are on a good thing. Luckily, we're in the age where we've got the internet so we can bypass them. Today I'll share with you what the scientists found and there are a lot of good professionals out there who may be able to help you. Now, fibromyalgia really does sound like they've found what's wrong with you, but here it is in black and white from the American College of Rheumatology website. The only clue they've got about the cause is research suggests that the nervous system is involved. It says doctors diagnose fibromyalgia based on patient symptoms. Now what that means is that you tell them that you have widespread pain, then they tell you that you have fibromyalgia. It also said that there's no tests, no cure, but they've got some drugs to help reduce symptoms in some patients. Now, as I said, the scientists found the cause over a decade ago. There's a lot of background research, but this is the published trial where they tested their theories and found they work. So, let's look at what they did find. They found that when your nervous system is bombarded with pain signals for a long period of time, it becomes sensitized. That makes your nervous system act like an amplifier. Normal stimuli become painful, pain becomes worse, and because your nervous system controls most of your body, you get seemingly unrelated problems as well. Now, what bombards your nervous system for long periods of time to cause this? Well, it can be things like arthritic pain, but the scientists found that the most common source was trigger points, which are those tender lumps in your muscles that therapists find. Now, I'll discuss these later, but first I'll take you step by step through what happens. Now, trigger points are arguably the biggest cause of musculoskeletal pain like back, neck and shoulder pain. But they don't show up in standard medical tests and are barely mentioned in medical journals. So they rarely get diagnosed and are poorly treated. Because of this, they can bombard your nervous system with pain for years and even decades. Now, as this diagram shows, once sensitization occurs, trigger points feed in their usual pain, but it gets ramped up like a big amplifier. The doctors then run their tests and find nothing, so they tell you that you have fibromyalgia. And then the drug companies get to see your symptom relieving drugs for the rest of your life. Next, we'll compare the way medics treat fibromyalgia with how the scientists did it. Looking at the medics first, they understand that there's pain and as the American College of Rheumatology found, the nervous system is somehow involved. Now they've got a shopping list of drugs designed to reduce pain and decrease the sensitivity of your nervous system. What's more, doing this is where the big profits are so the research funding goes into finding more and better ways to do this. On the other hand, once the scientists worked out that the pain from trigger points was sensitizing the nervous system, they simply injected the trigger points with anesthetic. Now, without the pain feeding into the amplifier, the fibromyalgia symptoms were dramatically relieved. 
And that's very exciting because it tells us that if you stop the pain from trigger points, you stop fibromyalgia. The only trouble is that the anaesthetic only lasts so long. And it's not practical to inject people's trigger points every day. To get rid of fibromyalgia, you need to get rid of the trigger points. Now we've got separate videos and info on our website about how to eliminate trigger points, so I'll put the links in the description. There are a couple of extra considerations though. By the time the trigger points have been there long enough to cause sensitization, they've usually become very entrenched, so it takes a long time to eliminate them. Also, because of the sensitization, some trigger point therapies might not be well tolerated, which means you might need more conservative care, but more of it. So, if you've got fibromyalgia, you definitely need to check out our information and find a good professional who deals with trigger points to help you. Now hopefully that's a bit help for you, but the best way to treat fibromyalgia is to not get it in the first place. As the scientists found, it doesn't happen overnight. It takes years or decades of bombarding a nervous system with pain signals. Now as the scientists found, the biggest culprit is trigger points, and as I said, these are too often poorly diagnosed and poorly managed. Now, if you wanted to come up with a way to get more fibromyalgia sufferers so they could buy more drugs for the rest of their lives, you couldn't come up with a much better plan than to keep trigger points out of medical journals and encourage doctors to mask their pain with drugs. But that's another story. Now, if you've got fibromyalgia, I hope I'll put you on the right path. If you've got friends or relatives with pain syndromes like back pain or muscular pain, have them check out our information about trigger points before they become sensitized. It's much easier then. If you've got any questions or comments, please email them or put them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Thank you very much for watching.